All right, more on the behavior beast stuff here, folks. Um, you know, I, I get a little torqued every now and again. One of the things I get torqued about is ah, psychology in general. All right, I don't mean to pick on my colleagues, my friends, all the people that are just normal, everyday psychologists. I don't have a problem with them on a personal level, but on a hype, not on a hypothetical, on a pragmatic and a scientific level, yeah, I got an issue. Why? Because I don't find psychology to be as scientific as what it could be. And I'm biased, all right, and I know that. I'm drastically biased because I'm a behavior analyst, right? I see, as we've talked about before, I see the value in studying things from an empirical perspective, right? And then applying what we've learned in the laboratory to everyday real world problems. <clears throat> Apply behavior analysis, okay? Um, so what's the utility of it, right? That, that's always the big question, what are you gonna do with it? Um, well, because we are so freaking scientific and because we have followed the uh, scientific method to a T, I mean, I don't mean just a little bit. I mean, folks, you realize that what I've been talking to you about is that we're not a soft science. We're a natural science like physics, biology, so on and so forth. Why? It's really cool. It's really simple. Why? Because we study behavior for behavior's sake. We don't seek to explain behavior at a different level. You don't appeal to some hypothetical damn construct to explain what you're doing. It doesn't do any good, right? So we look at for functional relations in the real world. And because of that, because of that natural scientific approach, what we ended up with was a science that is uniquely useful for modifying our world in ways that make it better for ourselves, right? You could even talk about self-management here, right? But my point is, is that name another part of psychology that does that. I know we all talk about it, but when you get down to the core of it, what you see is this appeal to something that might not even exist, right? These appeal to these hypotheticals that even in turn reify those hypotheticals and make them move the river. Move the river if you couldn't hear me, whatever it is. It, you do, you do, it's just, God, it drives me nuts. So when people go, well, what's the value of, of applied behavior analysis? I said, well, you want to solve the problems in the world? Do you want to learn how to get off of, uh, uh, just get off? <laughs> I guess we could leave it there. Um, no, do you want to learn how to get off of fossil fuels? Not a bad idea, huh? Um, how about addressing things like reacting to climate change? Let's, let's leave the whole part of that topic that is, um, argued alone, and let's just talk about the fact that it is changing and how are we going to deal with that? How are we going to get people to modify their behavior, to live in different zones, maybe to sell their houses, whatever they're going to have to do to survive? How about moving to Mars? That's a challenge. Maybe maybe the people that move to Mars want to know a little bit about how to function. Uh, maybe they want to know a little bit about behavior and how to select for the responses that you want in the individuals that you're working with. Or, oh my gosh, how about just society as a whole, right? I'm gonna direct you to Anthony Biglin right now. I want you to go read all of his stuff, all of it, starting with The Nurture Effect. Read the book, all right? And no, it's not, it, yeah, I suppose it's a bit of a shameless plug, but he doesn't know I'm doing it, he didn't ask for it. I'm just telling you to read the darn book, all right? Why? Because you'll understand the value of behavior analysis when you do. You'll understand what we can do with it. You'll understand that it can change all sorts of stuff. And because it's a natural science, we actually have some real hard-nosed data to work with. We're not making stuff up. It's not willy-nilly. We're not appealing to hypotheticals. We're going to make change, period. We're going to make change in people's lives and make the world a better place. Any problem you want to apply to that that involves an action, a behavior, we're going to tackle it. So people go, what's the value? Everything. Everything's the value. It applies to whatever you want it to apply to. And that in itself is what makes it a unique field. Some, myself included, will argue that it shouldn't even be called psychology because it's not a soft science. It's a hard science. It is a natural science. It is different than the rest of the social sciences. It isn't a social science, so I shouldn't even lump it together. It shouldn't even be called psychology. Radical behaviorism, applied behavior analysis, and experimental analysis of behavior. When you start to understand all of them, you'll understand the value. You'll understand what we can do with it. And the power of the techniques is important. It's, it, it's, it's life changing, it's world changing. You can use the techniques and so can I. That's why we're doing these videos. That's why we made it all open source. To get the knowledge where it belongs with the people that need it. It's that simple. See you later, bye.